proclaimed President Rodrigo Duterte included in his eight-point agenda, ensuring the attractiveness of the Philippines to foreign direct investment. To find out the outlook of investors under the new administration, we have with us Rick Santos, President of AmCham Philippines. Hi, good morning, Rick. Good morning, good to be here. Now, when we see uh, foreign direct investment flowing in mm -hmm. from January to February, they said it flowed in more as compared to last year. But yes. 2015 overall, quite flattish mm -hmm. from 2014. Do you see this growing under a Duterte administration? Uh, yes, we do. I, I think we're, we're very optimistic on the Philippines. I think uh, there's a lot of momentum uh, built upon the, the strong demographics. We've also seen an uptick in uh, pr pretty strong GDP stats in terms of some of the strongest in Southeast Asia and Asia. Uh, I think a lot of new foreign investors are coming in, uh, looking at the Philippines, seeing uh, all the opportunities, especially the, the call center BPO uh, shared services outsourcing sector continues to capture uh, a lot of foreign demand and interest as well. Uh, we've also seen other new institutional investors from the region taking a look for the first time. So we are very optimistic. Now, outside of the BPO sector, what other sectors do you see investors really looking at and yeah. seeking, having interest in? Yeah, if, in the real estate sector, I mean, from a, uh, you know, the BPO sector really drive the, the retail sector, which also drives the, the residential sector. And the office sector. The office sector as well. And then also we've seen um, a lot of industrial companies Companies coming back, so a lot of the Japanese companies that, that haven't been happy with their investments uh, overseas or, or in China, you know, so the industrial parks are now full. So we are seeing a, a lot of momentum there. So the demographics, once again, are crucial. But also, the, I think the the uh, the people that have been located in the Philippines as of late have been pretty happy with the way their investments have performed. And uh, um, so I think more uh, more growth across all sectors, including the even the residential sector. Um, now, the territory's plan to open up, you know, foreign restrictions when it comes to ownership, when it mm -hmm. comes to certain businesses. However, still keeping land ownership um, outside of that. Yeah. Is that a deal breaker in terms of not allowing foreigners to own land here? No, I, th I, think, it's a, I think it's a great idea. I think the, uh, it really um, uh, basically diverts attention onto the, the REITs, the REIT law, so which is passed into law, but I think um, a few of the implementing... You still have to see it happen. A, a few of the things in the, in the implementing rules and regulations probably need to be eased with regards to uh, foreign ownership, with regards to taxation, with regards to asset transfer. But if you look at REITs and uh, how we anticipate them performing, like what we've seen in, in Hong Kong and Singapore, et cetera, it really is a dem democratization of the property market. So the man in the street, the small investor, can can basically invest alongside the, the Taipans, the big Spanish families, et cetera. So we see that as a, as a real boon for the market in terms of bringing in more institutional investment, creating more jobs, and also uh, helping also move the stock market. Now, um, given that, though, wouldn't it expose also allowing the public to participate in real estate, for example, mm -hmm. investments? Won't that expose also the possibility of a, of a real estate bubble or property bubble? Now, the Banco Central is mm -hmm. rolling out their real, um, mm -hmm. their um, residential real estate um, index, mm -hmm. property index, to monitor the possibility of a bubble. What are your insights on that? Yes, I think that's a good idea as well. I think that BSP already monitors property. Property, but this will basically just be a, a safeguard similar to other countries in the region to see whether the market's on an uptrend or a downtrend, et cetera. So it would also show that, that um, you know, the, or the lack of a property bubble. So I think with the, the population growing at 2% per annum, um, everybody's now with f financing being much more reasonable, mortgages being easier to get. Um, you, you'll have an, a nation of uh, owners as opposed to renters that are able to build equity, which is similar to what we saw post-Second World War in the United States when people started to really be able to build equity pass it on to the next generation, et cetera. What's your outlook on the property sector? Do you think there's a bubble looming, or are you uh, still pretty optimistic uh, about no, it? No, we are, we are very optimistic. We still think the property market has, uh, has, has a long way to run. So we're seeing over 6 million square feet per annum in new commercial office take-up. So, and we're also seeing a lot of opportunities for growth in the region. Obviously, with the new administration, there's a focus on, on Mindanao, which is obviously my, my, my father's from Zamboanga, so, and, uh, uh, and Mindanao. So we're very excited to have a, a new president will focus on Mindanao. So look for places like Davao to, to grow and expand very quickly, uh, and some new opportunities outside of, outside of Metro Manila. So, now, Rick, uh, we just had the news that the Philippines slipped down one mm. notch in the Global Competitiveness Index. What are your thoughts on it? I wanted to pick your brain on what do you want, investors, what do they want to see done here to improve our competitiveness? Yeah, I, I think um, a lot of what investors look for is, is obviously good governments, infrastructure, and uh, investment in infrastructure, whether it's roads, rails, airports, secondary and tertiary schools. Um, 
uh, educational educational support because uh, obviously the BPO sector is growing, but it needs to be scalable into both low level and high, higher level software development. So and moving on to moving up the value chain. Correct, and then also you know security and peace and order, et cetera. That's a that's a mainstay for for overseas and also for local investors. So we see uh, the new administration and their policies and uh, whatnot going forward to be uh, be very attractive to, to foreign and, and uh, domestic investors alike. Well, it's great to hear that investor confidence is still there as we welcome a new administration. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you.